And right now, an update on our other developing story. Libyan Prime Minister Ali Zaydan has been kidnapped by armed militants in Tripoli, although some conflicting reports suggest he was actually arrested by governmental anti-crime forces. Bell True, who is following the story, is here now. Well, the latest report is that a rebel group has, has said that they are responsible for the kidnapping of Prime Minister Ali Zaden in retaliation to the Libyan role in this U.S. raid uh, in Libya, which took Abu uh, Anas al-Libi, who was supposed to be an al-Qaeda suspect. This raid happened on Saturday. U.S. special forces basically took the man who's implemented in 1998 bombing of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, which killed 224 people. There were reports uh, that uh, Ali Zidane was, was involved. He himself, however, on Tuesday condemned the U.S. raid, saying that Libya should be tried in their own countries, but fell short of really uh, blasting America, saying that it wouldn't actually harm U.S.-Libyan relations. The other report, however, which conflicts with this, is that he was, in fact, kidnapped by armed groups. He was taken earlier on today from the Corinthia Hotel in Tripoli by armed, by armed men. Uh, eyewitnesses on, on the scene said it looked more like an arrest, as there was no violence, and the government has said they don't know where he is. He was taken to an undisclosed location. Now, after the U.S. Special Forces raid on Saturday, there was a huge backlash from Islamist militant groups in Libya who said that they wanted to uh, stage some form of retaliation for the behavior of the U.S. in their country and had threatened several attacks on gas pipelines, for example. So it could be that this is part of that Islamic militant um, backlash on the U.S. raid, but we haven't got any confirmation yet, so we're going to keep watching this story in the coming hours. So there are conflicting reports about the Libyan Prime Minister's disappearance. Let's now discuss this more with German journalist Manuel Oxenreiter, who's been following the story. Uh, Manuel, nice to see you. So uh, the Interior Ministry claims it was an arrest. Why don't we know where the Prime Minister is being held? Well, uh, first of all, these news are not surprising at all. And... Um, we still talk about Libya like an existing state when we listen to the news that the ministry says it was an arrest, armed groups say, armed groups say um, it was uh, a kidnapping. So um, we, have, we have to take into account that Libya is a disintegrated state, it's a disintegrated area. And when we talk about ministries, we talk about something else than if we talk about ministries in, uh, in existing states or in states with, uh, with a state order. So it's not surprising at all that we get those confusing news. By the way, these are not the first confusing news we receive from Libya since the so-called revolution. Um, just the attention went away from Libya within the last month, it went to Syria. But uh, in Libya, we see that there is a country, a disintegrated country, controlled by warlords, controlled by those gangs with the biggest guns. So they do the government politics, and what they do is confusing for, for us, of course. So uh, I'm not surprised at all. All right, so we have reports that that was an arrest and also a rebel group claims that uh, it was a kidnapping, as you say. If you had to guess, what do you think has happened to, to the prime minister? <laughs> maybe, maybe there is, there is no conflict between an arrest and a kidnapping because we don't know who is now working for the interior ministry. Look, if we go two years back and if we see who were the ground troops of the NATO Air Force and, and, the French, uh, um, and, and the French military blowing away the Gaddafi government, we see that these were Qaeda gangs, that these were jihadis, that these were criminal, violent gangs. And those gangs are today uh, integrated in the so-called um, Libyan government. We have to see just one example, Abdel Hakim Belhaj, a jihadi with, uh, with strong links to Qaeda, that became military commander of uh, the, the Libyan capital, and he is now a politician in Libya. He's, he, these are the, the allies, the so-called allies of the West. But the problem is who is who's useful yet in in. Um, in, in such politics. So you cannot rely on those allies and this is maybe the lesson the, the West receives now. And um, maybe we see now that the revolution eats its children by the kidnapping of, um, uh, of the, the Prime Minister.
Right, and uh, if the rebels are behind the abduction, why is the Prime Minister a target there? When we go back, when we go back two years, we have to see what role the Prime Minister played at the time of the so-called Libyan Revolution. The Prime Minister was located in Europe. He was uh, heading for an opposition Libyan group. And he was the one, by the way, who was lobbying a lot at French at the at that time at the French president Nicolas Sarkozy for uh, a military action against the Libyan government. So he was in Europe the poster boy of the Libyan revolution, a uh, nice face which covered the fact that on the ground are fighting terrorists, Qaeda guys, criminal gangs. Um, maybe, maybe there is now an inner conflict between those gangs and those poster boys of the revolution and and of course there are there are many conflicts it's about money it's about corruption it's also about selling interests and libya as a country with uh, with natural resources so a lot of groups claim their interest of uh, having benefit so i think there are many conflicts we don't see now at the surface which might play a role in this also all right German journalist Manuel Oxenreiter. Manuel, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you.